wasted five years in college and racked up over 200K in student debt. After three years of pursuing a major that I hated, I finally decided to take a leap and switch my major to cybersecurity from electrical engineering during my senior year of college. What I didn't know at the time was that despite pushing through and actually completing the cybersecurity degree a couple years later, I would walk away with very little to show for all my efforts. I'll get back to that in a minute, but first I want to talk to you about this. In my world, there's something called pen testing, a profession where companies will actually hire you to try to hack them. So why is this even a thing? Well, cyber criminals are always lurking out there, learning about new attacks, leveling up, and to better defend against these attacks, companies have switched to a more proactive strategy where they hire professional hackers to actually attack them just to see how well prepared they are if they became the next target. These ethical hackers are called pen testers. Did you know that you can get an entry level job in cybersecurity in pen testing, making between 80 to 100K in the first year and well into the six figures beyond that? And you know what? People hate it when I say that pen testing is an entry-level job. But is this really true? Well, first of all, what does it actually require to become a pen tester? If you really think about the requirements to land any technical role, it almost always comes down to three essential skills. One is simply your technical skill. Second is your credentials. And third is your experience level. And beyond that, all you need to do is interview really well and showcase to them that you have some basic soft skills and a positive attitude that really goes a long way as well. And if you would like to optimize your interviewing skills, you're definitely going to want to arm yourself with my top 10 pen testing interview questions that you're highly likely to encounter during your next interview. And you can find the link to that down in the description section below. So how does all this actually map to pen testing, to penetration testing, as we call it. Let's start with your technical skill. This essentially boils down to, can you hack? Like, do you have the raw skills that you need to succeed in this field? Simple, but by no means easy. The second is your credentials. How well can you separate yourself from the sea of applicants and demonstrate to an employer that you actually have the skill set that you've worked so hard to develop? And the third is a really big one, and that is experience. This is the biggest hurdle to any beginner because without first having experience, how do you gain experience, right? It's the chicken the egg problem. Well, stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll go over a hack that you can use to get around this issue and actually gain real pen testing experience without first having to land a job. So to recap, it's can you hack? Do they know you can hack? And do you have pen testing experience? Now, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the most common strategies that others are using to actually learn this skill and break into the field. And we'll analyze how well they actually prepare you in each of those three areas. When it comes to making a career change, the most common route that most people take is to go back to college and get a degree in that field. This is the path that I went down myself when I was in college and decided to change my major, my senior year from electrical engineering into cybersecurity. Now, if you're still watching, I'm sure I don't have to spend too much time convincing you of just the extreme high cost of going down this route, but let's just say it took me over five years and 200K in student debt before I finally walked away with that degree. That's it, problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. I still had to start in the IT field first, spend a couple of years there while I studied on my own, and eventually I was able to land a pen testing job down the line. And as much as it pains me to say this, it was rightfully so. If I were to honestly evaluate myself, even though I had the piece of paper, show some credentials, I had none of the raw technical skills that were required, nor any actual experience. And the thing is, this wasn't even considered to be a bad degree program either. It was vetted by the NSA, one of the biggest universities in the country, and and even still. So next, let's take a look at the second most common strategy that has gained popularity in recent years a lot, and that is the self-taught route. Now, this path involves doing away with all the traditional education and learning on your own through practicing on these hacking sites, you know, things like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, and, and many others as well, getting certifications as well to pair with that. Now, compared to the first approach, this is much better. By focusing on the hands-on learning aspect and actually practicing hacking skills directly, you actually are able to develop the raw technical skills that you need in on top of that, you're able to greatly boost your credentials and start to set yourself apart from the crowd by getting the right certifications, especially if you do that, right? There are a few major downsides to this approach as well. The first is that although it's typically faster than going to college, it can still take quite a long time to become job ready. Out of all the pen testers in this field that I know that went this route, it took them about three years on average of self-study till they were able to land their first job. The second is that this route is not for the faint of heart. It takes a combination of strong self-discipline, patience, passion for the craft to stick to learning this stuff for that long on your own. And third, and perhaps the biggest downside of this route is 
you will still lack experience early on. So now with all that said, there is a third approach that is not as common that you can take. This approach combines the previous approach with finding a mentor. And this allows you to experience all the benefits with the hands-on skill development and certifications to build up your credentials, but at the same time allows you to avoid all the downsides and pitfalls with that previous approach. One of the biggest challenges when setting out to learn pen testing on your own is knowing which things to focus on and which things to set aside, let's just say for now. So put simply, you don't know what you don't know. When you have a mentor, you can gain the insights of someone who has already been down that path and can point you in the direction you need to go to get to where you wanna be. This alone can save you years of time. The right mentor, you could condense what would have taken you know, the three years of self-study into one year or even less. And this is because you no longer have to waste time doing things like coming up with a lesson plan, searching for resources, getting lost in endless, conflicting information that causes you to just wanna give up before you begin. Now, it may sound simple enough, but here's the thing which mentor you choose matters. You want to choose a mentor that has done the thing that you're trying to do. So if you want to become a pen tester or land some other job in cybersecurity, you wanna make sure that you're following a mentor that has actually done that. And there's one major issue as a beginner. It's hard to find a mentor, especially one that's actually invested in your success. You know, you see most pen testers that you could find as mentors are super busy with their job, their regular life, if they even have that right, especially if they're active in their own free communities, mentoring other people as well. Fortunately, there is a simple solution to this. You can seek out paid mentorship. With a paid mentorship group, it's always smaller and more personalized advice and attention from the mentor because they're not having to, you know, give advice to like thousands, hundreds of people. And you're also surrounding yourself with higher caliber people that are also paying. So they're more inspired and they're more dedicated down the path. So when following this path, you fulfill all the requirements since the mentor allows you to leverage their own experience. If they're really invested in you as well. They're able to help you gain that experience before even landing a job. And so there you have it. You don't need a fancy degree or years and years of experience in IT before you can get into pen testing. So go out there and get a mentor. Now, here's the thing though. A mentor that is truly invested in your success and has a comprehensive training program to take you from complete beginner all the way to junior pen tester in eight to 12 months is hard to find. So if you don't know anyone personally, send me a DM on Instagram with the word elevate and we'll jump on a 30 minute call where I'll be going over the complete mentorship system I've created called Elevate Cyber Year Pass to see if it's a good fit for you. And don't listen to the haters out there that went the traditional route and now they wanna pull you down with their gatekeeping mindsets. Watch the video on screen right now where you can see how I was able to help a guy land a job in cybersecurity as his very first job starting at $80,000 per year.